Hi class, this is uh, Dr. New Storms in my office doing a couple of review problems for you on NMR and IR. As I promised, there will not be anything really intense regarding IR on this particular test, though there will be some IR, but it won't be as intense as the last time, okay? Um, I'm going to start by doing a problem I've never done before, okay? And I'm going to give you this problem set in class. I'm going to do two problems. Um, so, if I can hone in on this, I don't know if it's possible, sorry, I'm creating great, uh, is that showing up, Clem? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the IR spectrum of a compound C5, okay, good, C5 H12O, okay? Now, what I want you to notice about the topography of this IR spectrum is, first of all, there's really nothing in the range 3,500 to 3,000. All of the peaks are below 3,000. What does this mean to you? It should mean that these are sp3 CHs. Then there is nothing of consequence all the way down to almost 1,450. You might get a little disturbed and think these are aromatic overtones, but it is not possible to have an aromatic if you don't have peaks at 1,600. And we will see from the formula that this is not an aromatic. Okay, so that's our IR. I'm going to write down what I got out of the IR. I didn't really want to draw it. Okay, hopefully you can see that. You're going to get this packet in class. Okay, on the board I have the NMR spectrum drawn. And as I said, I've not done this spectrum. But this is what the IR tells me. The IR only has SP3CH. Okay, it has no evidence of functional groups, okay? That's because I didn't see any peaks other than the sp3ch. Now that doesn't mean it doesn't have a functional group, but it doesn't have a functional group in the region between 3500 and 1450, which is the region we normally evaluate. The formula is given up here. You will recall that we calculate an unsaturation number by comparing this formula to the saturated formula. The saturated formula is C5H12O. The actual formula is C5H12O. You'll recall oxygen does nothing to the formula. The difference is zero. You may have forgotten what this means. But, and 0 divided by 2 is 0. What this means is that the molecule is missing no pairs of hydrogen, which means it has no double bonds, no rings, no um, triple bonds. Remember, a double bond is worth one pair, a ring is worth one pair of hydrogens, it's a loss of one pair of hydrogens, and a triple bond is a loss of two pairs of hydrogen. Okay, so I'm going to interpret this NMR using our traditional table, okay? So here's my table. You will recall from earlier in the semester, this is really great to go back and look at this again. You'll start to understand it better. Okay, this is our chemical shift, our area, our splitting. Do you remember this? And our conclusion, okay? So let's write this, and let's pay a little more attention to chemical shift. I really want you to take your NMR table out and pay attention to the shift, which is the position of the peak, which is related to pi bond density, as well as electronegativity. We discussed this in class a couple times. Maybe it'll start to come together now that Dr. Mallory's doing it in class. Okay. Um, now, Clem, tell me when I get to 10 minutes, okay? So I'm going to work my way through this spectrum. I'm at delta 1.0, a little bit 1.0, a little bit below 1.0, at about 0.9. I have an area. Remember, the areas are up above three, splitting, triplet. Okay, this is a very traditional conclusion. The area tells you what is here. The splitting tells you what is near, right? So what, the, what I would conclude with this is the most probable way to have three identical hydrogens is to have a methyl group, and this methyl group is next to how many? We always see N plus one neighbors, 
or something approximating that. So this is implying that these three have two neighbors. Okay, this is what I'm observing. This, these are the neighbors acting on this as little magnets, little bar magnets. Okay, now, it gets a little more complicated. Um, at 1.2, I have 2, and I have a multiple. Be careful with these complicated splittings. Do not overinterpret them because you know when you overinterpret a peak, you get married to your conclusion and you can't get out of it. So I'm not going to overinterpret that. This is saying I have two identical hydrogens, CH2, and they're near many. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to go any further with this. Okay, 1.6 or so, 2 multiplet. It's a CH2 near many. Now, what is this starting to make me think? This is starting to make me think that I've got CH2s in a chain. That's what a chain looks like, a lot of multiplets. All right, let's work our way down. At 3.1 or so, I have three, it is a singlet, okay, what does this mean? This means I probably have a CH3 group and it's isolated, but let's be more sophisticated in our interpretation, okay? I used to say, although it's nice to, although it looks fast, it's best to use it last, and that referred to the chemical shift. I want to start using it a little bit earlier now at this stage of the game. Clem, what's my time? Six minutes, okay. 46. I want to use it a little earlier in the game. This three is indicating that these hydrogens are near something that is drawing electron density off them and changing the field. That something has to be an oxygen, okay? So I'm going to be more sophisticated here and conclude that this must be a CH3O. Now this is legitimate because the unsaturation number is zero. I don't have to put any carbonyls in this thing. There are no carbonyls in this thing, okay? So this is just a CH3O. Now, I go down here, and there's another 2, okay? This is at about 3.5. 3.5, area of 2, triplet. It's a clean triplet, okay? This is saying I have two hydrogens, that's a CH2, that are next to 2, and if you're being a little more sophisticated, you would conclude that that, two is next to oxygen. This is an important step to take in your NMR solving. So I'm going to put the O here. Okay? So let me do my pattern making. You know, I do this like I'm making clothes. I lay out my pieces. What are my terminal pieces? I know the CH3, I am married to this piece. I know I've got that piece. CH3 has to be next to a CH2. I know on the other side of the molecule, I have to have this. Methyl is a terminal group. So I have to go CH3, O. And now I know on the other side of the O, I've got a CH2 and another CH2. Now the question is, do I hook these to each other? Does it make sense? So in other words, I know I've got this piece. I know I've got this piece. I know I've got that piece. All right? Is this the whole molecule? How, it's bookkeeping time. Don't forget to bookkeep. Did we use all the hydrogens? Of course we did. Because there are 12, let's see, 3, 6, and 6 is 12. We used them all. The NMR shows all the protons. Did we use all the carbons? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now these were just guesses. 5, yes. Okay, did we use the oxygen? Yes. So it actually makes sense to attach that there. Now let's check it. Okay, let's check it. This would give area of three triplet. This would give area of two multiplet. This would give area of two multiplet. Okay, this would give area of two triplet. Triplet. This would give area of three singlet. So that is the correct structure for that compound. Okay, that is methyl, uh, it is butyl, methyl, ether. Okay, so that's the end of problem number one. I'm going to do another problem. I really, really think it's a good idea to review this, and we're going to review it in class. Okay, so I'll see you in class.